Welcome to part 3 of our discussion of chapter 7 which deals with the shear and bending moment diagrams at the internal locations of, uh, of members like beams. So if you remember uh, in our last class we talked about how to find the shear and bending moment diagram. Today I want to uh, build on that and give you some steps to go through to find the shear and bending moment diagrams. Uh, we'll work through an example problem. Uh, I'll also provide you an example problem with hints so that you can complete uh, the problem as a home exercise. Uh, and then we'll end with a discussion about a cable under concentrated loads. So as a background, remember that um, we start the analysis of the internal state by taking cuts at specific locations along the beam. And these locations will always lie between uh, the, um, the position of a reaction force uh, such as maybe here and an applied load okay so uh, the next step is to assign a sign to uh, the internal state and the convention we're going to follow is that the left side member as shown here is assigned a shear force that's acting downwards that's V here and a moment that's acting counterclockwise that's M here and if these signs hold up after your numerical calculation what that tells you is that the state of stress in the beam is such that the left side is being sheared up with respect to the right side as is shown here and the beam is being bent upwards so please make sure to follow this sign convention because it then makes you uh, immediately understand what the state of the beam is okay now let's go through a step-by-step -step process of finding these diagrams so remember in a beam uh, it can support a transverse load and this load can be a concentrated or, or a distributed load applied at various positions along its length. Step one, like always, is to uh, first find the free body diagram of the entire beam <coughs> so that we can find the reaction forces. So for example, here we have AY and AX acting at uh, support A while BY acts at support B. When we do the analysis, you'll find that uh, A and B are identical in the y direction of value P by 2, and AX, of course, is 0, so we don't include it here. Okay. Then the next step is to take the cuts, right, so that we can solve for the internal state. So remember I said that the cuts need to be at uh, regions that uh, are between reaction force and an applied load. And so in this case, you can see that there's one cut I've applied at position C, which lies between A and D. Well, the next cut appears at position B, which uh, which lies between uh, D and B. Right? So, so that's important to to note. Uh, and so, once we have made these cuts, our next step is to go ahead and solve for the problem. Right? <clears throat> and remember, we've uh, the left side is assigned a positive sign for V pointing downwards, uh, or rather, it's assigned a sign with V pointing downwards and M counterclockwise. And then the left side, uh, sorry, the right side is is assigned um, a shear force acting upwards and a moment acting counterclockwise to be consistent with the uh, with with the application of shear and bending moment as we said earlier um, by convention. So now after you find using equilibrium equations the value of v and m at various positions along the beam, uh, so you know it as a function of x. Now you can go ahead and plot the V and M as a function of position X. And so that's what you end up getting here. Okay. So in this case, V is a, a constant on the left side, the positive value of P by 2. And it's a constant on the right side with the positive value of minus P by 2. And at the load location, you can see that it has uh, it has changed sign and magnitude. Right? Or rather, it has just changed sign here. It's gone from positive to negative. On the other hand, the bending moment is linear all the way till the applied load position and then it's again linear but with a negative slope on the right side okay. so let's go ahead and uh, now find uh, uh, find the bending moment and shear diagram for this situation here where we have a beam that is now under two loads uh, B and C so uh, remember the first step is is to uh, get the free body diagram and find the reaction forces and here is what the uh, free body diagram looks like. I have a load at, I have a reaction force at A and D. I have two loads at B and C. Once again, I'm going to ignore the X, but you can do it for completeness. 
So uh, I'm going to write down the equilibrium equations. So that means sigma Fy equals 0, sigma Fx equals 0. And then I'm going to take a moment about, let's say, A, and again, find that to be 0. So let's do that here. So Fx is going to give you 0, which means that Ax is 0. So there's no A force here. And when I do Ay, I find that I get Ay plus Dy uh, equals 2 times P which is the uh, the total applied load. So now we have two unknowns here and I want to eliminate one of them. I'm going to take the moment about A and that uh, leads to the fact that dy is going to be equal to P, which when I plug it back into this equation here, I find that Ay is also equal to P. And so each of the loads uh, results in a total reaction force of P at A and a value of P at D as well. Okay. So that completes our first part. Now. Uh, the second part is to take appropriate cuts at, 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 the, at the necessary locations along the beam so that we can find uh, the bending moment diagrams. So remember we need to take cuts at any positions where we have uh, two forces um, uh, 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 between which we have two forces acting. So obviously there's going to be one cut here, there's going to be another cut here and then of course between the two loads there's going to be another cut here. So we need to do three cuts here to find the entire diagram along the length of the beam. So let's begin with uh, the first one, which is the cut between AB as shown here in a magnified way. So B actually in this figure is somewhere out here. So I made a cut before that and, uh, and say the cut is at position X from A. And now the question is, uh, we, have been, we have assigned uh, the, uh, the the shear force to be acting downwards as per convention so it's V and we have the anti-clockwise moment again as per convention it's M so let's go and apply equilibrium here so I can calculate for example the moment about M uh, and uh, about A and set that equal to 0 and also I can find out the total force in the y direction set that equal to 0 and find the result so when I do that sigma Fy equals 0 leads to the fact that my shear force is going to be a positive value of value P while um, when I set MA equals 0 I find that the magnitude of the moment is going to be P times X so now what does this tell us it tells us that at any position along this beam from A all the way till B where we had the applied load P the value of my shear force is constant and it's a value P positive value P on the other hand, my moment uh, varies linearly with x. So when I come to to a, uh, since x is zero, I have no moment there. And then as I move away from a all the way to b, my moment increases linearly uh, with the value of p x. Okay. So that's uh, that's uh, tells us that uh, how shear and the moment behaves as a function of x in this region between a and b. Okay. So that's that's the first part. Now. Now we need to find out what happens between B and C. Again, what you do is you take the cut, right? And um, and uh, let's say now again our cut is taken between um, B and C. Uh, again, we assign the position X. And remember, B is right here now. Uh, and so now again, I've taken the right side portion of my member. So I have um, I have a shear force V. Uh, and moment M according to sign convention, right? So now we take a uh, total force in the Y direction, right? So now we have Sigma Fy is going to be consisting of a y um, Minus the load P that's applied. So it's a negative value because it's pointing down minus the V that's uh, Applied here as the shear force or appearing as the shear force. So this gives me a uh, now we know that Ay equals P, so this leads to the fact that V equals 0. Okay. So that means uh, it tells you that V is actually going to be 0 in between uh, these two applied loads P and C. Similarly, let's look at the moment uh, about A, sigma MA equals 0. And so now we have to take into account the applied load, which gives a moment of, uh, which is acting at B. And it gives us a moment of uh, uh, p times a, so and it's acting downwards, so it's a it's a 
uh, counterclockwise moment so I'm just going to assign a negative sign here for the purposes of our calculation here so minus PA uh, plus the moment M which is positive uh, because it's acting in the counterclockwise direction and then finally um, due to uh, the shear force V which is 0 so I'm just going to say this whole term is 0 so that gives us M equals plus PA so now you see that what you find here is that the shear is a 0 uh, so remember the shear force is 0 between uh, B and C and our moment is constant at value uh, PA between B and C okay so now what remains is finally the cut between C and D so uh, do this as a little practice exercise show that the value of the shear force is minus P for the region between C and D and the value of M is going to be P times L minus X where uh, I take X as being measured from point A you can also do this by taking X being measured from point D uh, you should get a slightly different uh, expression here but the value and the sign should be identical to what you have here so the final step is to plot uh, the shear and bending moment diagram so what you do first is you collect together what you have for each portion so for example for uh, the region A to B I have V equals P and M equals PX for B to C I have V equals 0 and M equals PA and finally for C to D I have V equals minus P and M equals P times L minus X and so I can go ahead now and plot each of these behaviors uh, so if, if we look at the values of V you see that it's a constant from all the way from A to B which is what is shown here so value P then it is 0 from B to C so that's what's shown here and then it's negative P from C to D and that's what's shown here now if I look at the moment I have a linear increase from A all the way to B so it's value of PX so when I reach B it's a value of P times A so this this magnitude here is P times A and then for B to C it remains constant at P to A which is what we have here and then finally uh, from C to D it again decreases linearly with X uh, at X equals um, uh, at, at X equals L it goes to 0 which is what you have here according to this expression and at X equals uh, uh, at um, X equals 0 which is uh, which is um, oh, so, sorry at X equals um, let's see we have L minus A which is this value here uh, we should have this equal to PA which is what you get right and that's correct right here okay so with that we complete this analysis and let's move on to the next next problem so the next problem now is um, a load that is a distributed load that's applied to the beam and now we want to find the shear and bending moment diagram here as well so again we follow um, step one is to find the free body use the free body diagram of the entire body and find the reaction forces so there is no reaction force except that at C so you can go ahead and find that you'll find that CX is 0 and CY is WL by 2 now let's take a cut so how do we take cuts here again we want to take cuts um, in the region where you have um, uh, uh, distributed forces or reaction forces so that you can interpret what the internal behavior is as a function of position so I'm going to take a cut you know somewhere here which lies between A and B the end of the beam and position B where our distributed load ends and that's that's what is shown here okay so this is point A and somewhere here is point B and somewhere in between at position X I've taken taken a cut so this is a position X here right so now we go ahead and solve so let's write down sigma Fy so sigma Fy here is going to come from two terms one is the V acting downwards so I call it negative V and then due to the load acting here so the amount of load that's acting here is W multiplied by X so that's going to be WX and so this is equal to 0 that tells me that V equals negative WX here okay now let's take the moment about A so sigma MA and again uh, we have a moment component due to uh, due to V so I'm going to call it 
negative Vx and of course I have the positive M and then finally I need to take into account the moment due to this load W so now remember that since it's a rectangle the effective weight acts at uh, the half position so I'm going to say it's W times X by 2 right and um, is the is the distance at which the moment effective weight of this thing acts so the moment is w times x by 2 times uh, x because x is the total load so w x is the total load right so this gives me my m a and what this tells you is that m is going to be negative half w x square and you can see that's what we have uh, out here as well and so we work through this okay now what you need to do again as an internal exercise is take a cut somewhere in this region right and and solve for uh, solve for uh, uh, the V and the W and what you should get is that V is going to be negative half WL it's a constant and um, and W is going to be uh, given by this expression here where X is measured from position B so that means you're measuring so this is zero and then I'm measuring X in this direction here okay uh, X in this direction here so go ahead and try that and then finally we again put together everything and you see that what you'll find is that uh, in the region from A to B your moment actually is parabolic while in the region from B to C it's linear as you will see from the solution here so in this region B to C your moment increases linearly with X the magnitude increases linearly with x although it's a negative value while in the region a to b it was a quadratic form uh, on the other hand uh, your v is linear with x in the region a to b while it's a constant in the region b to c and so we see that here it increases linearly uh, the negative value and it's a constant okay so with that let's move on to the last topic which is uh, analyzing uh, a cable that is being subjected to um, to loads at specific locations along the cable so remember uh, cables can only uh, withstand tension they are flexible members and and you can either apply concentrated or distributed loads but in this uh, class we will only focus in on the concentrated load okay. so here's an example of a cable that is supported between two points a and b and at specific positions along the cable like at C, C1, C2 and C3 you have a concentrated load being applied. Okay, so um, the problem uh, that typically we have uh, when we're looking at cables is that we want to be able to find the shape of the cable as well as the tension at different positions. Okay, so in order to be able to solve that uh, typically cable problems uh, are laid out in such a way that we can use a certain set of assumptions uh, to solve for them so here's what uh, uh, we are going to assume first is that each concentrated load that is applied it basically is a vertical load right that means it only applies uh, it's only applied along this vertical line and there's going to be no component that appears in the horizontal for that load p1 p2 and p3 the second is that uh, we are going to assume that the weight of the cable is negligible compared to the loads and the tensions right? because the cable is flexible so it has uh, virtually no resistance to bending and then uh, the important thing here is that between two successive loads in the cable we can think of the cable as a two force member okay. so these are the four you know uh, simplifications uh, or assumptions that we will use in solving for cable problems now um, uh, we need some other information some more information here for example let's say we uh, take the entire cable as a free body like we've been doing for all our problems we start out by the free body of the entire structure right um, and and what happens here we have reactions uh, forces at A and B so we have two reaction forces at A and two at B so we have four unknowns but we know that we have only three equations of equilibrium so obviously it tells us that uh, we don't have enough information here to solve for this problem under the given circumstances so uh, an additional equation is, re uh, is needed 
and this equation is obtained by basically considering equilibrium of the the portion of the cable where you are provided the coordinate of some point remember we're trying to find the shape and the shape requires us to know where the cable is it is is located uh, with respect to its height and position along the x-axis right so if we are given a position such as D at a given height and a d given x value then this can help us find um, uh, the, uh, uh, this provides us an additional piece of information that can allow us to solve the problem so for example shown this figure here is that at position D I have a tension that points in a certain a a a certain angle and this angle can be uh, typically found out because we know exactly where the y position is and where the x position is okay so that gives us a way to find out this angle here as you will see okay so even if you don't can't find out this angle uh, what d allows us to do is that it allows us to calculate the moments because we know either y or we know x so that's the powerful uh, tool that we have here simply because we know exactly where d is situated okay so the additional equation you can think of is that the moment about point D is zero because I know Y and I know X for point D. At other points in the cable, you know, for example, if you look at point C2, uh, you can you can uh, use that to find out uh, maybe the height of uh, the position of the cable by looking at the moment about point C2 because now we have solved for all the unknowns uh, or at least all the unknown reaction forces so we can find out what uh, the tension at C uh, at uh, C2 is or the value of the height Y2 is by using equilibrium equations now using the equilibrium in forces Sigma FX and Sigma FY that leads us to the tension TX and TY okay, okay so with that let's solve an example problem here that involves a cable with a concentrated load so you can take a moment read through the problem um, the load that uh, the cables are attached at A and E and we want to determine the reaction forces that appear at E right? both A and E are fixed so that means we have uh, EX and EY appearing here right so we need to find out EX and EY okay so we begin as we have done with all problems you draw the FBD of the entire cable and then go ahead and calculate so our FBD is going to be we have um, we have EX and EY right and we have AX and uh, and AY right and so um, I can begin by um, just using the fact that I have um, so we have loads applied at, of 2 4 and 6 kilonewton at locations B E and D and uh, and these distances along the x-axis are given and the height of location E is also given as 4 meters okay. so I'm going to start by saying let's find the moment about A so that I can get um, the value of EY right so EY is 20 meters away uh, we are taking it acting upwards so I'm going to uh, assign a positive sign to that moment counterclockwise moment I have um, um, let's see I have uh, so I guess 7 kilonewton is um, is what we got here in our previous uh, condition so EY is 7 kilonewton so uh, let's go back here sorry some mistake here so we should have uh, let's go back here so EY times 20 right uh, and then we have uh, uh, the force D it's acting downward so it's minus 6 times 15 I have the force of 4 kilonewtons at E acting downwards so that's again minus 4 times 10 and then I have uh, the 2 kilonewton force again acting downwards so that is minus 2 times 5 so this is equal to 0 so when you solve for this you should find that EY is going to be seven kilonewtons and acting upwards. So our initial sign assignment is correct. Okay. So now uh, the next step is we need to take a cut uh, so that we can find um, uh, find out uh, the equation that can actually get us to the value of e x. Okay. So we can actually 
look right at the position C of the cable which is um, uh, I believe right here or rather position E of the cable no sorry C so it's B C and D so this is B this is C and this is D so I'm going to look right at position C so we can you know cut the cable right there and the reason we can do that is the height is given there so that makes our life a little bit easier so I have C the height is given as 4 meters and of course the 4 kilonewton force acting downwards here and so now I'm going to take the moment about um, uh, position C for this cable and uh, so we're going to do it or uh, position C is right here so we have the EX force right so a moment from the EX force is EX times uh, 4 meters so that's what's given here and then I have the 2 kilonewton force uh, uh, that is uh, acting so I think some mistake out here as well let's go through this so I have MC equals 0 uh, so EX into 4 that's correct uh, and then I should have 4 kilonewton force um, so uh, this is this is an error here so what we have is three forces so let me just redraw this again here to be slightly bigger so we get this done properly so we have EX and we have EY okay and we have a load here which is 6 kilonewtons this is 5 meters away this is also 5 and this is 4 and this is 4 kilonewtons so you want to calculate the moment about point C so we have three terms, three moments uh, terms here. So one from the six kilonewton, one from EY, and one from EX. So let's look at each here. So if I look at EY, which is seven kilonewtons, uh, the moment of that is going to be seven uh, times ten, right? Because that's the distance to the axis that has C in it. So seven times ten. Now my EX force is going to give a moment that's in opposite direction to EY, so that's going to be minus EX. And that height is 4 meters so into 4 and finally I have the 6 kilonewton force that's, um, that's acting in the same direction as EX so this is going to be negative 6 uh, negative 6 times 5 so into 5 meters okay so this tells you that EX is going to be uh, 10 kilonewtons okay so that's what we have here so uh, this is a typo on my part so please ignore that so this gives us EX equals 10 kilonewton, and so that uh, solves for the problem that uh, as stated, finding the reaction forces at uh, at E. Okay. Okay. So uh, as an exercise, follow up with this and show that the maximum tension in this uh, cable system here occurs in the portion DE of the cable. Okay and that tension has a value of 12.21 kilonewtons so please try this out at home uh, and um, and hopefully it will build your confidence with solving cable problems like this okay so let's wrap up um, so today we uh, basically worked on finding shear and bending moment diagrams for beams under concentrated and distributed loads and this requires taking cuts and careful use of the distance x in the equilibrium calculations um, we solved a problem with the uh, cable under concentrated loads uh, as as in all problems we need to take the FBD of the entire cable and we also need uh, additional equation um, by taking a cut at a position of the cable where we know the height and the distance so that we can um, find out or add an additional piece of information to solve for the reaction forces okay thank you for listening bye bye